Uh, it was very appropriate that he not introduced me as a former football player. I was a place kicker, which means, you know, you touch me, they throw a flag, which is like the best way to go through on a football team. But uh, it, it's good to be here. I, I represent the Utah's third congressional district. Uh, Utah is a hotbed of uh, tech activity right now. Uh, we've had uh, Omniture, which was uh, sold to Adobe, which has opened up a, an amazing building right in my district. Uh, Intel uh, and Micron have a joint venture called I Am Flash, which makes a lot of flash memory. Um, they're, they're employing you know, a couple thousand people now. Uh, eBay's second largest uh, facility in the country is actually in, in Utah. Uh, Oracle has a huge data center there. I mean, we've been doing very well. One of the reasons is we're, we're the, one of the youngest states in the nation. Um, and certainly my congressional district was named at one point the youngest congressional district. Now, that's a good segue to some of the challenges that we face in the United States Congress where we have some people who haven't quite grasped as members of Congress in the House or the Senate that this tech thing is probably here to stick around. Um, my favorite story, I, I've only been here, you know, I'm just starting my fifth year, but I had been here just a little while, and it was funny because we had a, a member of Congress who was really making the resistance to having Blackberries in the office, and finally he relented and said, all right, we'll get a Blackberry, um, <laughs> kind of missing the whole idea of how productivity could be greatly improved by, you could check this thing out, like if you went to lunch, you could check it out, and the world's a changing. And uh, as I try to tell my colleagues, look, uh, Tower Records, they went out of business like 20 years ago, folks. You know, my, I, my son, amazingly now, is, is 20 years old. And I remember when he was five, five, he came running around the corner and he, he said, Mom, Mom, look at this great big CD I have. It was a record. He didn't, he, like, he's never grown up with this. And so you all understand that. I understand that 95% of my colleagues still think they could go down to Ter Tower Records and get you know, their Bee Gees album if, they, if the one they have breaks. That's what we're dealing with. Uh, consequently, the law, I think, is, is very, very much behind the times. Uh, one of the things that I'm working on, I'm so glad to hear this panel, because I hope that they love our bill. I'm here with, uh, Troy, with uh, Troy Stock for my staff. Uh, we introduced what's a, a GPS uh, act, uh, geolocation bill. We did this with Senator Wyden. Uh, we introduced this jointly. I did in the House, he did in the Senate. Very bipartisan in its approach. It really looked back at the Jones case. If you're not familiar with the Jones case, where you had the Supreme Court nine to nothing make a ruling that, uh, yeah, uh, use of geolocation inappropriately could be a violation of the Fourth Amendment. What well, the case I've been trying to make with my GPS Act is it's not just about limiting law enforcement and trying to get them to have a probable cause warrant to be able to track somebody using geolocation information. It's also to make sure, certain that individuals can't surreptitiously follow somebody else across state lines. Uh, that is not something that, uh, that, that we can allow. It just goes one step be, uh, too far. And uh, it's really interesting, as we were drafting this bill, we finally got to the point where we were gonna invite some of the big uh, providers out there in wanted to get their reaction. And, and it was pleasantly surprised that they were very much in favor of this because the last thing these uh, providers want to do is have people become afraid of their phones or they're afraid of their iPad or whatever it might be. Because if people are afraid that somebody's gonna be watching them or following them and they don't even know it, now, then that would be a bad thing. Now, when I wanna watch my 12-year-old daughter is she takes her iPhone out and about, hey, I'm cool with that. I'm got my right. As a parent, I'm, I'm good. That's the nice electronic leash. But used for the wrong things, it can go too far. So these are obviously some of the challenges, but why we introduced this bill uh, to say, look, you're going to have to have a probable cause warrant in order to uh, justify being able to follow somebody. Uh, we also have a cell phone unlocking bill that we're working on. This should be a simple no-brainer. The White House is in favor of this. Again, the providers, when we went to them, they said, look, we just don't want you to interfere with our two-year contract. We want to be able to, but yeah, you buy the phone, you own it, you're on the hook for the two-year plan or one-year plan or no-year plan, whatever it might be. That's fine. That's a separate contractual obligation, but you should be able to take that device and be able to go from one carrier to the next carrier. That, that makes great sense. The other thing that we are working on before we get to questions, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer. I'm just here for just a few minutes, but... Um, is uh, has to do with internet radio. 
Uh, if you were to go back and look at the royalty structures of how terrestrial radio, satellite radio, cable radio, it's all different. Now, terrestrial radio has been fought out for the last 80 plus years. Don't want to get in that fight. That fight's already been fought. That, 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 it's, it's probably not going to change. In fact, I don't think it's going to change. But for new technology, there's got to be a way to come up with a royalty structure so that artists can make money, that providers can make money, and that the public can get the music that they want to get. And it's interesting, if you look at the history of this and you look at the internet, why aren't there more internet radio stations out there? Yahoo, uh, Rolling Stone, MTV. They all tried to get in this space and they all had to get out. Why? Because the royalties are ridiculously high. You cannot make money. There is not a single provider of internet uh, music that makes money. Now, Pandora is the biggest uh, gorilla in the room. They, uh, they have 80% of the market share. 150 million emails have gone in and signed up for Pandora, which is pretty remarkable. They lose money every month. They can't stay in business. Now, what we do have is what's called the 801B standard, which is the method by which satellite providers and cable providers have been able to go in and negotiate a reasonable royalty that allows them to make money and provide the service. It's been in operation for 30 years, and so we're getting ready to introduce this bill that says it's the same standard, it should be the same standard for internet radio as they do for satellite and they do for cable. It's worked for 30 years. Everybody seems to be happy with it. Um, we're gonna try to go back and look at the copyright, copyright royalty board and how it's structured and appointed and all that. But we gotta bring it up to, to some modern times. So those are three of the things that I'm working on. Uh, but I don't know if you have any questions, but this is a space we wanna play on. It's imperative. Everybody's using technology. Most people don't understand it. So I'm glad to see, uh, glad to see you in this room here today. So any questions that I can maybe answer? Yes. Yeah. The GPS Act um, includes elements with regard to law enforcement collection of yes. information, but also commercial collection of information. Um, are you wedded to having um, both commercial and um, law enforcement collection in that bill? Would you be uh, open to modifying that? I mean, I guess I, I, I would like to say I, I have an open mind on everything, um, but I think it's important that they are paired together. Uh, I think it's. Um, usually, when you start to have a discussion, it gravitates real quickly to law enforcement. But we got to remember, there are some people out there with some ill motives. Now, at the same time, if you grant permission, if you have, I mean, I think it's crafted in, in such a way that if you have an app or you, let's say Google, where everybody picks on Google, right? So let's say Google has something that's going to be make your life better and easier and, and you grant permission because when you walk down the street and you like coffee and you want to know where the local coffee, hey, no problem. Um, what we have to be able to look at, like for instance, on the, uh, the unlocking, the Senate bill we're pretty critical of because under the Senate bill, the deal with the cell phone unlocking, it doesn't deal with those that actually make the apps and do the other parts of it. They still would be liable. So that's kind of ridiculous, right? We want the, the, app, the, the, the developers to also be protected under the law. That's where if we can come up with a standard that's acceptable for law enforcement, that should go all the way down the same side and just say, hey, look, you're gonna have to reach this high bar which is a probable cause warrant in order to do this, or if the person grants permission. There is also exceptions out there for a public emergency. You have a missing child. You don't want to have to go through. I mean, of course you're going to be able to do that. So there's some, some public safety types of things, but again, very limited in their scope. Uh, missing children, for instance, is a good example of one. So, Anything else? Or? Yes. Yes. Um, I don't believe so. I, I don't think so. I mean, I have to go back and look at that, but we didn't get into, you know, royalties or let me, when we start dealing with, obviously with the internet radio, that's a, that's, that is mostly about those types of royalty types of things, but it goes to permission. If you go, if you grant permission and you want your provider or the apps that are associated with your Android or whatever it might be, hey, then have at it. You know, they're providing a service, you're giving permission. 
I think the marketplace will help sort out um, who's doing what and how and uh, what's good and what's bad. Some will you know, take the Apple closed universe uh, path. Others will be more of an open infrastructure. Uh, you don't know, but it's the wild, wild west. And I, I think that's a good thing. You know, it's the one part of our economy that's working. It's actually growing. So let's not do anything to hamper it, but let's also give some privacy protection so that the public knows that they're not being spied on and they don't, they don't realize it. So. Anyway, listen, uh, thank you for your involvement. This is a pivotal thing. I welcome your input and your comments and your perspectives on this. Uh, this isn't going away. I kind of think this tech thing is going to be around uh, here for a little while, and uh, I'm glad to be involved in it. I'm going to go to this interview. I'm going to get on a plane and end the day in Palo Alto, and we got a whole day of tech uh, on my schedule for tomorrow morning. So um, thanks for having me here. I do appreciate it, and good luck to you, and let us know how we can be of help. Thank you. Thank you.